Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to make this cool 3D logo animation for your videos. I'm going to break it down step by step and I'm going to cover everything in great detail. Uh, but before we dive in, just a quick note, you're going to need Element 3D, Magic Bullet Looks, and CRT Emulator to achieve this exact look. I'm also going to be using Topaz Photo AI. It's totally optional. I'm just going to be using this to upscale the images we're going to be using for our logo. All of these programs and plugins are going to be available in the Discord link in the description, so be sure to check that out. With that said, let's get started. Alright, first step is, we're going to need to prep our scene. I like to start by uh, getting the face tracking in place. So head over to the tracker section on the right side of your screen, click on Stabilize Motion, and carefully align your face tracker over the person's nose. Now make these squares a little bit bigger than the uh, default values. Uh, the bigger they are, the more accurate the face tracker is going to be, uh, but also the slower it's going to be. And now go ahead and press the play button. Now, a quick note, if the face tracker starts messing up halfway through, don't worry. You can pause it and manually correct it frame by frame by clicking on the right arrow in the tracker panel. Just go one frame at a time until you fixed it. Once the tracking looks solid, hit apply to lock in the changes. Go ahead and check out your footage. Yeah, this looks perfect. All right, we're ready to move on. Next up, we need to find the logo we want for the movie or scene. For me, I'm going with the Deadpool and Wolverine logos. Specifically, I want both the text and the icon from the movie. So I'm just going to hop on Google, search for the logo, and find the best version that works for what I need. Once you've found your desired logo, go ahead and download it. I'm going to do the same exact thing for the icon as well. Now we need to isolate the text and remove the background from the logo. There's a handy website for that called remove.bg. You can either search image background remover like I'm doing here on Google or go ahead and go directly to remove.bg. Upload your logo there. And as you can see, it does a nice job of removing the background for us. Once that's done, go ahead and download your new image. I'll repeat this process for the icon as well. All right, this next step is optional but I'll be using Topaz Photo AI to upscale the image so it looks super crisp and is easier to work with. Once you've got Topaz Photo AI open, go ahead and import your image and it'll automatically handle the upscaling for you. Honestly, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, this looks great. Now I'm gonna repeat the process for the icon so both images are at their best quality. Once that's done, you can go ahead and save your new files and we're good to go. All right, now we're gonna head back into After Effects and transform the images we just downloaded into 3D. To start, I'll work on the text image first. Import it into your scene by pressing Control-I on your keyboard. Select the latest version of your text image and bring it into After Effects. Once it's in, we need to adjust the scale to fit our scene. Take your time to find the right size that works best for your design. Now, make sure your image is centered properly. Double check this to avoid any alignment issues. Next, we're going to pre-compose the layer. Right-click on the layer and choose Pre-Compose. In the dialog box that pops up, make sure to select Move All Attributes in the New Composition. And then check the box to adjust composition duration. This will ensure that everything stays in sync. Now, duplicate this pre-composed layer by pressing Ctrl D. Rename one layer to Logo and the other to Texture. We'll use the Logo layer for auto-tracing to capture the shape of the text and the texture layer will be used to apply the texture. With the logo layer selected, go to Layer and go to Auto Trace. Now I'll go ahead and copy my settings. I do want to say, make sure that each individual letter has its own separate mask. Sometimes auto tracing can combine the letters, which we don't want. Now, let's create a new solid layer. Right click on your timeline, go to New, and then select Solid. Now, choose whatever color you want. We're going to add the element effect to this solid layer. So go ahead and add it to the layer. We're going to rename it to Text Element. Select the layer, press F3 to open the effect controls, and go to Custom Layers. Expand this section, then open Custom Text and Masks. For Path Layer 1, choose your Text Logo Layer. For Custom Texture Maps, select your Text Texture Layer for Layer 1. Click on Scene Setup to open up Element 3D. In the Scene Setup window, click the Extrude button at the top, then navigate to your Extrusion Model. Drop down the menu and select Bevel. I recommend setting the bevel size to zero to keep the appearance smooth, especially once we apply the texture. Make sure to check the Use Layer as UV box as well. 
Next, we're going to head to the Diffuse layer under the Texture category and press on None Set. Drop down the arrow at the top here and select Custom Layer 1. Everything should look great. Click OK to apply these settings. To give your text more depth, add an environment slash reflection. Choose an option that enhances the look of your text and helps it stand out. After selecting and applying the environment slash reflection, click OK. I also like to check the position of the element to ensure it aligns correctly with the original image, as elements sometimes can misalign things slightly. Perfect. Now you can hide the other two compositions from earlier, as we won't need them anymore. Now it's time to repeat these steps for the icon. I'm going to go ahead and import the icon using Control i and bring it into our composition. Adjust the size as needed and make sure it's centered properly. For this icon, I noticed it was slightly off center, so I had to manually adjust the position to just get it right. You can use the proportional grid as I did to help align things manually. Once that's done, follow the same process. Pre-compose the layer. We're going to rename them and then duplicate the layers. And then we're going to auto trace the logo layer, create a new solid, add the element effect to the new solid, and set up the logo and texture layers as before. Open scene setup in Element 3D, click Extrude, set bevel to zero. Check Use Layer as UV, and set the Diffuse Layer to Custom Layer 1. Go ahead and click OK. Now, once again, add an environment slash reflection, and you can go ahead and press OK. Now we're going to align the icon element with the original image once again. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide the two precomps that we created earlier, as we won't be needing them anymore. I'm actually going to place the element for the icon underneath the text so that it's uh, behind it in the image, giving some depth. Now that everything looks great, it's time to animate these elements. So I'm going to start by isolating the text element so it's easier to focus on. I'll hide the icon element for now. Select your text element layer and press F3 to bring up the effect control panel. Now head up to group 1, go into particle look, and then multi-object. Enable it. This is going to let us do some cool things like rotating the individual letters, uh, spreading apart the letters, a lot of stuff. In this case, I'm going to adjust the rotation random multi to give each letter a unique rotation. Click the stopwatch to animate it and that'll bring up a keyframe. Then I'll do the same with the displace value to spread the letters out. This will give us that cool randomized look and since we separated each letter with masks earlier, everything stays clean and distinct. Next, with the layer still selected, press U to bring up all the keyframes. I'm going to drag the default keyframes to the end of the animation. Now, with the playhead at the start, I'll tweak the values until I like how it looks. The cool part here is that it automatically adds a new keyframe when you adjust those values. After that, I'll add a Gaussian blur to give it a smooth fade in effect. Hit the stopwatch again to animate the blur. If you press U twice, it'll hide all the existing keyframes, but pressing it again will bring up any new ones, like the blur keyframe. I'm going to drag that default keyframe to the end and set the starting value to 50 for a nice fade in. Now to animate the opacity, press Shift T. Do note, if you only press T, it's going to hide all the existing keyframes that we have. It's only going to bring up the opacity. But clicking Shift T when you have other keyframes up, it keeps them all still visible and still opens up your opacity. I think that's super useful. So I'm going to drag the default opacity keyframe to the end and set the starting value to zero, giving us a nice fade in to go with the blur. Once that's done, highlight all the keyframes and press F9 to apply easy keys. This smooths out the transitions. Now we're going to head into the graph editor. Each line represents a different value we've animated. I want the end to have a smooth, gradual stop, so first, make sure you highlight all the end keyframes. This way, when we make adjustments, everything stays in sync. Next, look for the yellow circle handle next to where you just highlighted. Drag the yellow line over to the left. Since we've highlighted all the keyframes, this adjustment will apply to all of them evenly, even if it's a consistent, gradual stop across the entire animation. Adjust as needed to get the timing just right. At this point, I noticed the composition ran a frame too long. Uh, to fix this, you can highlight all your layers and press Alt right bracket to trim them where the playhead is. Uh, then press N to match the work area, and then you can right click that and 
trim comp to work area. Now the duration is perfect for the text. Next, I'll do the same for the icon. First, I'll head to the effect control panel with F3, and just like before, enable multi-object. This time, I'm animating the particle size, which is basically the scale of the element. I'll also animate the Y rotation to make the icon spin like a coin. Press U to bring up the keyframes, move those default keyframes to the end, and I'm going to adjust the starting value to rotate the icon five full times, so I'm going to put a five here. I'll set the particle size to zero at the beginning for a smooth scale up effect. After that, I'll add Gaussian Blur and adjust the opacity just like we do with the text. Now I'm going to have to re-highlight everything, even the keyframes from the text from earlier. I jumped the gun a little bit earlier and uh, easy ease it and messed with the graph too soon. Uh, I want to redo that and keep everything exactly the same. That way we have a nice, clean, smooth animation. Finally, once that's all done, I want to animate the position of the icon so it moves from the center of the screen up to the top above the text. So press F3 to open the effect control panel for the icon element layer, scroll down to create group null and click create. This adds a null object that's parented to the icon layer, meaning any changes to the null will affect the icon. Rename it to stay organized. Now press P to bring up the position and hit the stopwatch to animate it. I'll leave the starting frame position in the center and move the ending position to be above the text. Then I'm gonna ease the keyframes with F9 you could highlight all the layers and apply easy ease and adjust the graph like before, but in this case, the changes I don't think are gonna be that noticeable, so I'm just gonna keep it simple and uh, change the graph accordingly. Now the icon is nicely positioned above the text to give it that clean layered look we were aiming for. Alrighty, moving on. Next, we're gonna add the CRT to this entire layer. First, we're gonna pre-compose all of our layers into one composition. Select all of your layers, using control a right click and choose pre-compose name the new composition whenever you like i'm going with deadpool for this once your layers are combined into one make sure the new comp is selected now head up to the window menu then go down to extensions and select crt emulator once again if you don't have this plugin you can find it in the discord mentioned earlier there are a bunch of different styles to choose from in this plugin it's awesome for the scene i'm going to go with style 4 once you've selected that, click Apply Effect. You should see an instant change to the look of your layer, giving it that old school CRT vibe. There are plenty of settings to play with here. Feel free to tweak them to fit your style. For my part, I'm going to remove the two rectangular overlays that come with this effect. I find that it gives us a smoother look overall. I'm also going to lower the vibrance to the minimum setting, but adjust these however you want to match your project. Once everything looks good, hit Complete to lock in the effect. Now the CRT is applied to your scene and it should be given that nice retro old vibe. However, I noticed that the effect had some added glitches making the text kind of hard to read. So to fix this, uh, you just double click the pre-comp to go inside of it and adjust the individual setting. In this case, I found that the glitch screen layer was causing the text visibility issue. So I went ahead and hid that layer and we're all good. Now everything looks a lot cleaner and the CRT effect is giving the scene a great feel without obscuring any of the important elements. Alrighty, to finish off, we want the background scene to be really desaturated, almost black and white, but we want to keep our text colorful and vibrant. So let's dive back into the CRT effect pre-comp, and from there, go into the pre-comp we made earlier, the one I renamed Deadpool. The goal here is to add an adjustment layer above the scene layer but keep it below the text and element layers. So right click, go to new, and select adjustment layer. Make sure to position it above your scene layer only, not any of the text or element layers. By placing it here, any effect we apply to the adjustment layer will only affect the scene layer below, leaving our text untouched. If you want to make both the text 
and the scene black and white, you could simply move the adjustment layer above everything. But in this case, we just want the background desaturated. For the effect, I'm going to use Magic Bullet Looks to add a nice dark black and white filter. If you don't have Magic Bullet Looks, the black and white effect works too, though it may look a bit different. I personally like the depth Magic Bullet Looks provides. Once you've added Magic Bullet Looks, head into the plugin and look for the SID filter, which is under the grunge section. This gives the scene a rich, gritty black and white look that's perfect for what we're going for. After selecting your filter, hit the check mark in the bottom right corner to apply it. Now, when we go back to the main composition, you'll see everything come together. The background is beautifully desaturated, while the text stays vibrant and full of life, creating a really striking contrast. And that's it. This effect brings everything to a polished, professional finish. And that's it, everyone. You've just gone through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a smooth, crisp 3D logo animation that'll really bring your footage to life. I want to say a huge thank you for watching if you made it this far. I truly hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful. Since this is my first tutorial, I'd love to hear your feedback. So feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you think or what you'd like to see in the future. Stay tuned because there's a lot more to come. Thanks again, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.